What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you'd like to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Since the gate, which was the entrance to the labyrinth, would be the only thing left above the ground, it was bound to raise a few eyebrows. Investigations would surely be carried out. This was the conclusion we reached in a meeting with Benamaru and others. I see. Thanks to Mentor, I've also gotten a power-up. <laughs> I see. Thanks to me, huh? Veldora grinned, giving me those puppy eyes he does when fishing for compliments. It was a pain in the ass, but I had to hand it to him, we couldn't have done it without him. Well, you really helped, Veldora-san. <laughs> Ain't that right? You all heard it. So, could you give me the cake? Of course I can't. That was the piece I had saved for later. Then, have mine. Ooh, thanks Diablo. Sorry about that. I apologized. No, no, it's the least I can do for you, Rimuru-sama. Diablo assured me. How reliable. I may as well indulge in his kindness. I glanced at the screen as I enjoyed my cake. The challengers were trying to take on the 60th floor. Knowing they are spies, wouldn't it be better if we captured them? No, I want to see how strong they are, how far they can go. Giving them the prize money does sting, but it's pretty exciting and I don't see any problems with it. At worst, there was always the option of capturing them and confiscating the money. I was going to let them think I generously paid them, while taking full advantage of them. You're amazing as always, Rimuru. That's dirty, but really smart. Although Veldora and Ramirez complimented me, for some reason, it didn't make me happy. Shuna rolled her eyes at us. But it seems we failed. Who would have thought that Minos's Bardichi would appear on the first drop? It's a holy weapon, so undead creatures will have to watch out. We were getting a little carried away with the first time guaranteed drop thing. The guardian of the 60th floor was a dolman. I decided to give him the title, Immortal King, for him to welcome the challengers like he did when he was still a white king. A dolman's power shined when he led an army. On his own, he was weaker than Gozer and Mezer, so I had a feeling that this time would be another disappointment. Moreover, since a dolman was a white, he was extremely weak against holy and light elements. As long as Mark was using Minos's Bardichi, it seemed like Adalman's chances of winning were fleetingly low. Although I had given him a lot of advice, this floor's main gimmick was the traps. Since I was not expecting much of the boss's strength, I had decided that it would be okay to give the challenger some weapons he was weak against. I did kinda screw Adalman over. Sadly, even he couldn't stop these three, right? Well, it might have been my fault, but I hope you'll forgive me. At that point, I curbed my expectations and instead looked forward to their battle against the Guardians of Floor 70. Immortal King, a dolman curled his fleshless lips when he noticed the presence of intruders in his domain. His jaws clenched, teeth grinding against each other, you could hear a slight creaking sound. It was hard to tell, but apparently, he had a broad grin on his skull. You seem happy, Adelman sama the voice addressing him belonged to the man who had been his trusted friend for many centuries, a former paladin named Albert. He had been at Adalman's side the longest, even after the day they fell into a trap and died. When Adalman joined the lowest ranks of Rimuru's subordinates, Albert devolved into a skeleton swordsman, a low-class monster. He was reduced to such a weak existence that he was lucky not to have disappeared. Naturally, he became unable to speak. And yet, the Albert of today was speaking fluently. How? The reason was very simple. Right now, Albert wasn't a skeleton swordsman, he wasn't a death knight, which was a few evolutionary stages above. He was a death paladin, an even higher existence. He remained a dead spirit and had no physical body. However, he appeared no different than when he was alive. The blue willow wisps floating around him and his deathly pale complexion were the only indication that he was no longer among the living. A dolman had no lingering attachments to the body he had in his previous life. Rather, he loved the bony body he had right now. Albert, on the other hand, didn't share the same opinion, so he used his newfound magic power, being far stronger than any death knight, to construct a body by manipulating magicules. He still had a lingering pride and an emotional attachment to his human appearance of the past. Therefore, he currently had the appearance of a fresh-faced young man, although calling a dead spirit fresh-faced was rather strange in itself. He was decked out with terrifying equipment, and just from a single glimpse, one could understand that Albert was no ordinary individual. Indeed, I am in high spirits. Albert, the guests have arrived. Hearing these words, Albert, too, nodded happily. I see, they've finally come. A handful of words were enough for them to understand each other. These two truly were on the same wavelength. Yes, the time has finally come to be useful to him. Adalman cheered. After all, it was Rimuru-sama who let us live peacefully. 
Now that we have been given this much power, you know that we can't afford to make the same mistakes as last time. I am well aware of that, of course. I suppose it was an unnecessary warning. Perhaps the excitement has made me a bit talkative. The two looked at each other and laughed. And there was one more creature with them. A brutal and vicious roar reverberated through the city of the dead. I see, you're looking forward to it, too. Very well. You should use that power to your heart's content today. We shall give a testimony of loyalty to God. Quietly, and then profoundly, their eagerness filled the entire area. Adalman had once completely lost his faith. But now, the demon lord Rimuru was the subject of his renewed faith, he had become Adalman's new god. A few months after his painful defeat. In order to be useful to Rimuru, Adalman devoted all of his time into regaining his strength as a white king as quickly as possible. Thus, he rapidly possessed power which surpassed his own when he was in his prime. That was the degree of Adalman's devotion. Meanwhile, Rimuru found faithfulness to this degree rather overbearing. On the contrary, he was thinking, sorry guys, it doesn't look like you'll win this one, and was already placing his expectations on the next guardian. But since Adalman and Albert were blissfully unaware of this, they remained full of energy and enthusiasm. Especially this time, no, always from this point forward, losing was absolutely not allowed, they must continually offer up victories. In high spirits, Adalman and his companions began to take careful measures against the foolish intruders who would arrive shortly. The ferocious battle ended as soon as it began. Is what I wanted to say, but it all ended so quickly that it left me speechless. I had even gotten out a set of playing cards just in case I got bored, but I didn't get the chance to use them. It ended with Adalman steamrolling the invaders. It was a stunningly vivid victory. It wasn't that the opponents were weak, they weren't sick or hurt, either. In fact, they looked to be in great physical condition and were well motivated, but Adalman and his troops outperformed them in all respects. The challengers this time were quite strong. When I finished analyzing their skills, I thought that they were stronger than Adalman. They were all above rank A and had their own unique skills. Shinji had a unique skill called Healer, which was a very unusual skill that allowed him to manipulate viruses. When fighting against a living creature, he seemed to be able to destroy them from the inside. He was also evidently capable of manipulating the composition of the air to disseminate microscopic attack agents called viral poison. Honestly, it was a ridiculously powerful ability. Wouldn't that make him invincible against living creatures? Since it was impossible to see the viral poison with the naked eye, you wouldn't be able to beat Shinji, if you had nothing to rely on other than your eyesight. Of course, those microbes could be used for healing, too. Given how it was superior to medical nanomachines, it was an extremely versatile and handy skill. Next was Mark and his unique skill thrower. It evidently allowed him to throw anything he could grab, and given how he was able to toss even monsters, it looked like the skill also applied to anything he could lift. If combined with gravity manipulation magic, it could potentially be more troublesome than your average kinetic weapon. It would be really effective if used against an army rather than individuals. Finally, regarding Shin's skill, it was an assortment of convenient powers. Unique skill observer contained instinctual avoidance, danger detection, trap detection, monster detection, and presence detection. Apparently, he could even spot Shinji's viral poison. When combined with his battle prowess, he was unparalleled in escaping danger. He was fast and didn't fall into any traps, which made him a natural enemy of the labyrinth. That was the gist of things. I planned to use those yummy-looking skills as a reference. While those three were brilliant on their own, their perfect compatibility with each other made them even stronger as a team. I thought it'd be understandable if they were able to defeat Adalman. On the other hand, Adalman had gotten way stronger than ever before, and just within the past few months. I mean, you wouldn't see much of an improvement in the battle prowess from monsters lacking self-consciousness. Though maybe you would, if they survived for several decades, but it was not something that would change after a few years. But in the case of Adalman and Albert. Um, what's going on? Why are those two so strong right now? And what's with that dragon? Adalman, Albert, and an evil dragon that I'd never seen before were all standing in the boss room. It was nearly 10 meters long and exuded a noxious miasma. Where the heck did they dig that thing up from? I wondered what else had happened while I was away from town on my business trip. You must have been surprised. Actually, I kept it a secret, but you gave them equipment, right? They looked overjoyed and were training really hard. Oh, oh, and you remember how the magicule density in the labyrinth is so high? By absorbing those magicules, Adalman and Albert regained their former power. Ramirez proudly chirped like she was bragging about pulling off a successful prank. What she said was true, however, when I examined him more closely, I saw that Adalman had evolved from a white to a white king. 
He still came across as a bony guy dressed in regal clothes, so I didn't realize that his magic power had increased to such an outrageous level. Meanwhile, Albert completely skipped over the Death Knight evolution and turned straight into a higher level monster called a Death Paladin. White kings and Death Paladins have the same amount of magicules as archdemons. <laughs> the little guys are trying their best to be useful to us in their own little way. They'd supposedly evolved rather easily, but they became much stronger than I'd expected. Well then, what is that dragon? What? You didn't know? That's a dolman's pet. His pet? Hmm. Now that you mention it, I feel like a dolman did say something about wanting to keep a pet. I never would have expected such a fiendish dragon. The dragon was a death dragon, the pinnacle of dead monsters. Since Shuna and the others were familiar with it, they thought I knew about it as well. This was partially my fault. It made me realize once again that Rikoko, report, communicate, and consult, truly was important. So, moving on to the main point, the events of the battle. There wasn't much to say. Adalman sat still on his throne while the death dragon laid calmly to his left. Albert went ahead on his own and defeated everyone just like that. Mark didn't even get any time to display the true abilities of his Minos's Bardici. Albert blocked him with a weapon of equal class, the unique grade cursed sword, and flawlessly cut him down. Shin, witnessing this for himself, became dumbfounded, lowering his defenses for a split second. Albert didn't let an opportunity like that go to waste and attacked Shin with lightning speed, turning into a blur. Shin was defeated just as easily as Mark. Ha! Ah! Shinji couldn't help but scream in shock and rushed to shoot Albert with the holy magic holy cannon. Holy knights were good at this kind of magic, but barely anyone else could use it. He didn't mention his proficiency with it when he registered, so this might have been one of his trump cards. This spell was suited for rapid fire, so he managed to land a direct hit on Albert. Since it looked avoidable to me, I thought Albert must have been careless, but my worries had been misplaced. The only reason Albert didn't move was because he didn't need to. No way! Shinji cried out as Albert's sword sliced through him. The battle ended there. Hold on, Albert is undead, so shouldn't he be weak to the holy element? To the people who thought the same way, I'm one of you. See, you aren't wrong, so why was Albert completely fine? The answer lay with Adalman's trump card, extra skill holy demonic reversal. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to the new members of Anime Echo High Sponsors. Rand Hall Hernandez, Siege 1999 Rock Welch, Destiny Smith, Isaiah Alston, Matthew Mowers, Roman Albino, Maya Flandre, Bas Bulin. Thank you so much for helping out. I'll see you guys in the next video.